Hi there, my name is Scott Marker. I'm the franchise owner of Network in Action here in the Treasure Valley, Idaho. I'm the first one here. We're scattered all across the United States. It's a franchise of uh, once a month professional networking uh, groups that uh, meet and try to help each other's businesses grow through referrals. And uh, so I came up out of that, I came up with this uh, podcast, which is Treasure Valley Quick Tips, which is just me bringing in local uh, uh, Treasure Valley experts in their field and trying to share, you know, bits of tips and advice to help out uh, individuals and business owners here in the Treasure Valley. So today I have Ruben. So why don't you introduce yourself, Ruben? Thanks, Scott. Uh, I'm Ruben Ortega. I'm a corporate attorney at, at Gravis Law. I am native Idahoan. Uh, I uh, lived out of state for a number of years and finally decided to come back home. And so we've been uh, really enjoying the the train, change of pace and transition. That's awesome. Because you 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 were from the Seattle area, correct? Yeah, I just came back from yeah. Seattle. Grew up in Southeast Idaho, but um, Seattle is got a little crazy for us. We decided that we'd find <laughs> come back we'd come find, back to home. Find find a close way to get back home and a good excuse. So it's been it's been awesome. That's awesome. Hey, being a business attorney, um, and this might not be, um, but is there any such thing as what's a typical client you have? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, a typical client of mine, I would fit into the broad category of an entrepreneur, whether it's right. a small business or a you know medium-sized business or even a large one. I think that the clients that are attracted to working with me kind of have this entrepreneurial drive, and you know, per I like to live you know kind of vicariously through them. They take all the risk, and I get to enjoy the ride. And uh, but I would say an entrepreneur is really you know, entrepreneurially minded people that are, you know, wanting to grow and, and, you know, build something. Those are the people that I love to work with. The business owners. Okay. So what there's like, you know, I don't know how many attorneys there are. Uh, well, business attorneys are, but I'm sure there's a lot of them. And I, I've, I've heard great things about you. Yeah. You actually got referred to me. And, but what, what, what would you say? Someone said, why, you know, what Ruben, why are you different than, you know, why should I come to you instead of some other business attorney? Well, and it's true. There's a, there's not only a lot of good business attorneys. There's a lot of attorneys out there in the world, <laughs> and um, so most of us are smart. Some of us aren't, but ultimately, what sets me apart, I think, from from most attorneys, is I'm really more interested in building a long term relationship. Scott, I'm I'm not in the market to uh, you know charge my client you know thousand bucks here, fifteen bucks there, yep. and nickel and dime to death. I really just want to create a, a relationship where I can help them and help their, their family and their kids, kids at this, at some point I've, yeah. uh, I've helped business owners sell their business and then done their, uh, help their kids take some of that money and start their own business. Right. Because oh, cool. I'm in it for, for a long relationship. And so I think that at least from my perspective, that sets me apart. Yeah. I think, I think, if, you know, if you're running a business, that's what you want is you want some, you know, uh, you know, some, you know, the term used gets used a lot, but a trust, a true trusted advisor. So, you know, you come in, you know, there's some of the, that, you know, maybe, maybe you're there when they start the business and maybe you're there five years from now and you're still helping them with, with, you know, different, maybe different challenges, but you're still there helping them and they have, you have a relationship with them. Yeah. My, just to tell you a quick story, Scott, my very first client came to me with a, uh, uh, they had built a brand new, beautiful home and they had bugs hatching out of the hardwood floor <laughs> every summer um, and, and from helping them through that mess, um, which I don't know if you can imagine having a brand new home and then waking up one morning and having bugs, <laughs> it was insane. Mm. Um, but I've helped them with their business. I've helped them do their estate planning and I've helped them, uh, buy, you know, some real estate and investment property and, oh, cool. and with me for, for 15 years now. Yeah. See that, that, that's awesome. And I think that's what people want is, you know, like the whole, you know, relationship like that so that, you know, you can, again, as challenges come along, you can help them out, but, you know, grow with them and with all the different changes they have. Um, one, one thing too, you'd mentioned that you, that you like to do is, and I like that you mentioned was, is you say about relationships and about not charging them a thousand bucks here and a thousand bucks there. What, what's something else you, you told me before about being different about like the billing? Yeah. So, so I, I, I do have a billable rate, a billable hour, but I, yeah. I really try not to bill by the hour. I prefer to charge my clients on a flat fee or on a project basis, right. um, my good clients, after we've built some relationship, some trust, just put me on a monthly retainer. And, yeah. um, and so those are the ways I really prefer to work. I think it, it 
helps them communicate with me. It helps them not feel like there's a barrier to pick up the phone and call me. And yeah. oftentimes it helps me address problems beforehand before they become, you know, a big mess to clean up. Yeah. We can we can strategize beforehand because they don't have to worry about getting billed for that phone call or or that email. They just know that, you know, when I'm going to charge them, I'll, I'll outline what it is and, and then we'll do the project and we'll get it done. Yeah, that, that's what I really like too because that's the one thing you wouldn't want to do as a business owner is, you know, every time you had a question, think, oh, I don't want to call or call Ruben because I'm going to get dinged again. Or if you can get to, you know, get together in, a, in some type of agreement to where, you know, one month I might have a lot of questions. Next month, no questions or few questions. But just I, when you told me that, I thought that was great because, like I said, um, that's always been my fear is, you know, uh, in the years past is when I could talk to an attorney, how much is that going to cost me? <laughs> well, if you're, running, I mean, if you're running a business, you, you don't want that attitude because there's sometimes you probably should talk to an attorney before you do something. <laughs> well, exactly. And we, lo- we know that good business owners run on budgets, right? They yeah. set budgets and they have yeah. goals yeah. and professional services, whether it's accounting or, or legal or whatever it is, yeah. I think des- deserve uh, to, to pay respect to that because you want good business owners as clients. Yeah. And so if they have a budget, you set them a budget and yeah. you can make that happen. Yeah, that, that that's awesome. That's like I said, that was something that really stuck out with you. Hey, and then with, with most of your your business clients, um, what, is there like a reoccurring piece of advice you give your clients? I mean, it, you know, any piece of advice you give to business owners? Well, I feel like there's there's really when it comes to doing business deals or you know creating some sort of legal relationship, there's really three ways to mitigate risk. You can mitigate it with a contract, uh, you can mitigate it with insurance, or you can go uh, eyes wide open and know what you're getting into, right? Right. And and I think that most of the clients that I give them, one piece of advice that I always give them is I'm not going to be able to solve all of their risk, right? but by the time we're done through their contract or or whatever, they're going to have you know, everything mitigated by contract they can, insurance they can, and then they're going to know what they're getting into. And, And what's worse, most, you know, scares most clients away is the unknown. Right. And so, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the typical advice as we're, as we're going through and, and, you know, trying to structure companies, you know, I tell clients, look, if you leave, uh, not having all your questions answered and not knowing what you're getting into, then I didn't do my job. Right. And so that's the advice I give them is to make sure you know, the risks you're, you're taking and, and how you're mitigating them. Yeah. That's a great, simple way to explain it too, but no, you're right. That's awesome. Hey, you know, I know that you work with a lot of, um, you know, early businesses and stuff, but then you also work with ones kind of in the middle and then also ones that want to e- exit. So how, how do you help your clients? I mean, I, I mean, there's one, the transition could be a transition if you're with them for years, right? I, I get that, right? Then also you have three different clients come to you. One of them just starting out. One of them's been doing it for, you know, uh, 10 years and the other one's been doing it for 30 and wants to get out. So what what are three just kind of, overall ways you can help those type of clients. Ones just starting out, ones that have been in business for a while, and then ones that want, want are, are looking for an exit. You know, they're, they're yeah. just going, I need to, you know, I'm, I'm kind of burned out and I want to, uh, how do I, how do I logically and smartly, you know, exit the business? So those three buckets, really, how do you deal yeah. with that? So I, I think I break it down into a couple different things. First, I always start with the end in mind. So I, I go to each of them and I say, you know, what is your goal? You know, and whether that's in two years or in 25 years, they all have a goal. They all have some idea what they want. And so I figure out, okay, what's what's that goal? And so with a with a startup or a new company, a lot of times it's it's creating that foundational documents. It's creating your partnership agreements or making sure that you're the right structure, whether that's an LLC or a corp for tax purposes. And you get that solid foundation. So you're off to a good start. I think, you know, with a growing company. You know, they have goals. They, they want to create some strategic relationships or maybe they want to raise money. And so oftentimes what's going on with the growing companies that the owner is heads down, working hard, and they haven't taken the time to step back and go, OK, which way am I headed? Where, where are things going? Right. And so I think that the best thing that I can do with them is I actually have a, a strategic document that I share with them that says these are the six most missed compliance issues that if you go to an exit or that you get bought out by somebody changes the price of your deal. And so I help them, I help them go through that part of their planning. So whether it's a five years down the road or, or in a, in a year, they know that they're, they're again, knowing their risks. And then on the exit side, um, 
there's a lot of tax planning that goes on and there's a lot of um, prep work that happens when you're going to sell your business. But ultimately, it's their baby. These business yeah. owners have, have created this, right? And so helping them transition um, from a legal standpoint, you know, unlike most attorneys, I would say my, my best skill is not sitting behind a computer talking uh, right. or typing, but it's really helping interact. And so I'll sit down with a right. business owner and say, you know, this is the process of a transaction. I've been through hundreds of these. There's going to be, you know, three, three times during this transaction where you're going to call me and you're going to say, Ruben, it's off. It's not worth this much money. Right. And, and we're going to work through uh, that from, and from a legal standpoint, um, understanding kind of your, your post transaction obligations. Cause a lot of owners, they want to, you know, go to Mexico and be done right there. <laughs> they want to check yeah, out yeah. <laughs> and, and most buyers, uh, need a little more accountability than that. So setting those expectations, yeah. not only help make deals happen, but make sure they close. And that's really yeah. uh, important in the, in the process. No, that, that's, that's great the way you do that. That, yeah, I love that because I'm a, I'm a planner. So, I mean, not always am I the guy planning, but I like to work with people. That have a plan. <laughs> you know, like said, because again, like, like he says, I'm a business owner and sometimes you just, you get, get caught up in your, your busy, you know, busyness and you don't, you don't really you kind of deal with you got to deal with the fires that are in front of you. Yeah. And you don't really I mean, kind of. And, and then also, when you said on the way in the exit, I, I can, uh, I can see that absolutely is that, um, you know, you want to sell the business, but uh, if you want to get the most money out of it, you're going to have to, in most cases, probably give some security to the person buying it that, Hey, I'm not just going to go, here's the keys <laughs> to the business because you're going to let, if you do that, you're going to let a lot less money or not even make the deal close. Well, so that makes a lot of sense. Even with family businesses, there's a lot of times a father call me and be like, hey, I want to give my business to my son and I don't want anything for it. I just want him to like, you know, pay for my retirement or whatever. But that's not the best for the sub because from a tax yeah. standpoint, he doesn't get any deductions. He doesn't get write-offs, right? So we have uh, to structure it for some money so that he can get some write-offs and, uh, you know, best intentions, but a little guidance. Yeah. But, you know, overall, that's, that's why business owners uh, in any stage should, should come to you because like you said, you, you you've helped hundreds and hundreds of business out. When you tell me that, that's probably one of the things that make me that, uh, like what would be the most secure if I was coming to you is because of experience, you know? Yeah. So, well, perfect. I really appreciate your time today, Ruben. And, uh, uh, I wish you the best. And Hey, I'm going to put in the show notes, you know, uh, you know, your contact information, okay. but what's the best way for someone to get a hold of you? If someone to be honest. Out to you? Yeah, I honestly, I am, I'm on my cell phone all the time. My office line even forwards to my cell phone. So, okay. Feel free to call that one. Um, okay. My email is is rortega at gravislaw.com and that'll that'll put you in the queue if I'm if I'm crazy and there's chaos. I always get to my emails within two days. So perfect, perfect. Okay, perfect. Hey, I really appreciate it, Ruben. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great day.